can share it with you all afterwards in case you want to fast forward, rewind or um, get those uh, tip, top tips again. Uh, firstly, I just wanted to uh, introduce myself for those who I haven't met. I'm Lisa Wolf, the Director of Tourism Events here at Townsville Enterprise. And I'm joined today by some wonderful gurus in the world of content and social media. So from my team, we've got um, Simone Sullivan, who looks after our PR and marketing. Uh, so Simone is currently located at the Museum of Underwater Art. Uh, <laughs> From Tourism and Events Queensland, who's um, enjoying the Great Barrier Reef today, and Eleni, also from Tourism and Events Queensland, who has uh, one of the most uh, favourite photos from Magnetic Island behind her, and she's at the <laughs> Adelaide. So they've got a bit of an island and uh, island and reef theme happening today. So our next one, we might have to take it to the outback. I think. Um, so I wanted to introduce, I wanted to firstly thank you all for joining us today and introduce what we're calling our Tourism Talks uh, webinar series. We're going to be rolling out over the coming weeks a, a weekly, either a webinar, a blog or a, um, a pre-recorded video that provides our tourism, hospitality and events businesses with some great tips, tricks and skills um, to, I suppose, come out of the other side of COVID with a, with a new set of skills and capability to enhance and help your business thrive. Um, so we know that it is extremely challenging times for everyone, uh, but we do hope from speaking to a lot of you, there is some, some great opportunities uh, to, I suppose, have this upskilling program happening at the same time. So if you have any topics that you would like us to discuss, feel free to reach out. Um, next week, we'll be releasing a video on videography and virtual reality tips and tricks. We're also going to do our top tools to advance your marketing blog. And we're, um, the following week, we'll be discussing Instagram and a deep dive into that platform as well. So stay tuned for those. Um, but to start with, we, I might hand over to, uh, firstly, before I hand over to Simone, um, there is at the bottom of your screen, um, you'll see a Q&A panel and also a chat panel there. If you have any questions throughout, please feel free to pop them in there. And then when we get to the question times, we can address those. Um, and if you did want to speak after or, or raise anything, I can certainly unmute you when the time is right as well. We will also have a couple of polls pop up during the session today so that we can get some insight into how you're managing your, your content because that's what today is all about. It's about dealing with content during a crisis. So I might with that hand over to Simone and um, I'll let you talk about some of the activities that we're doing um, at the moment with Tell to support content. Thanks, Lisa. Um, so I'm not sure if you may have seen it on our channels. We've got a few things in the market at the moment, just trying to think creatively around um, how we can still support our industry and keep people interested in towns in North Queensland. We've still got an amazing region that's here ready for when people are able to travel. Um, so the two sort of key campaigns that we're running at the moment, um, the first is our virtual staycation social series. So basically this is just a suite of content that we're working with our operators to, do, um, to develop. Um, it can be anything from a live stream or a, a pre-recorded video, um, the virtual reality experience. So we've been sort of doing a few different things. Uh, last week we had Billabong Sanctuary on um, all week to celebrate their 35th birthday. Um, so we're obviously working with our operators and if you haven't been approached by us directly, definitely reach out. We're keen to include everyone. Um, I'm sure that everyone's got a story to tell and um, it's something that we all are really keen to sort of share. Um, and our other campaign is um, we only launched just before Easter. Um, it's our Buy Now Holiday Later campaign. Um, this one, it's primarily about getting dollars in the banks of our tourism operators right now, but giving people the opportunity to plan ahead and book that holiday in advance and have something to look forward to once this isolation period is over. Um, so again, in terms of the people that are in, in business, we're keen to get people on board in our, um, we've got an online sort of shop system that we can get a gift voucher loaded to. So um, Megan Hawke, one of our colleagues is operating that one. So if you haven't um, been in touch, definitely reach out if you're interested in participating in that. Um, and we're launching a bit of a content um, series of information across all of our channels in the coming weeks with different posts and um, different things. So lots of things happening, but um, definitely keen to include everyone in what we're doing. We definitely want to support our industry wherever we can. Um, so whoever's got control of the slides, can you click across? <laughs> I think that's me. Please. Yeah. Um, so we've got uh, the ladies from TEQ here today to um, help present on 
what to do in terms of social media content during the crisis period. So it's probably leaving a lot of us, um, and it did, everyone at the start took us all by surprise um, and kind of left us thinking about how we can still share our message and talk to our audience um, throughout the, this period. Um, so we're going to get some insight into what um, leaders in our industry, so obviously TEQ, so how, what they're doing and how we can adapt that to um, our businesses here in Townsville, North Queensland. Um, so the next slide is um, some of the key learning outcomes. So um, these are the things we're going to hopefully cover today and give you kind of some guidance on. And obviously you, we're here to um, answer any of the questions at the end, but also moving forward, if you've got any questions around how you want to engage your social media platforms to still continue um, an engagement with your audience, definitely reach out. We're happy to help. Um, so the first one obviously is how content has changed during the, this period and what you can do right now to sort of still keep your followers engaged. Um, secondly, how to maintain valuable engagement with your customers. And thirdly, some tips just on how to boost your social media activity and strengthen your online presence um, during the COVID period. So in saying that, I'll hand over to Lenny and Sarah from Towns uh, Tourism and Events Queensland. Um, and they will now share their screen and take over. Thank you. Sorry guys, just bear with us. <laughs> we no, haven't no. used um, Zoom before. <laughs> While Lenny's getting that up, oh, there it is. We might, um, Megan, if you want to send the first poll through to everyone, we've got some polls to to um, send out throughout the presentation so that we can um, get gauge what you guys are doing with your social media as well. Cool. So can you all see that on your screen now? Yep, that's all good, Eleni. So today we're just going to um, talk through our social media strategy during the current crisis, um, how we initially responded. Um, um, I can't see your screen, sorry, Eleni. I'm viewing a word. Oh, there we go. Hang on. Oh, okay. back to it. Sorry, there was a bit of, I wasn't sure if that was everyone else having the same problem. There we go. Is that showing to everyone not the slideshow? Uh, we can see it's, yeah, that's it. That's the yeah. right one. Wonderful, perfect. Okay. Um, I'm just. All right. Um, so we just wanted to share how we initially responded um, the types of content we shared and how we're pivoting through the different phases um, of the current crisis. So this slide kind of talks to our immediate response and what we did when restrictions started to come into play. Um, so we first of all, as the situation developed, we paused all of our paid activity and focused our attention on our organic posting. We then closely monitored uh, sentiment on our channels, um, as well as using a social listening tool to listen into global sentiment around coronavirus in Queensland. And then in addition, we um, are also collecting research and insights from Queensland key markets. So this, using our sentiment analysis, we developed our first post that acknowledged the crisis times we were now in and have continued to develop relevant posts sensitive to the time period we are in and always, I guess, evolving um, our tone of voice depending on the um, current crisis evolves. So our objective was for social to share content across our channels that will engage 
and bring together um, and inspire our audience in a different way. Um, we wanted to keep our audience engaged during this time um, and maintain Queensland's brand saliency. So we wanted to still try and be top of mind for people when it, when it is safe to travel again. So the first post that we went out with looked like this, um, and this was back in mid-March. Um, so it related to our audience and the scenario we were currently in. I think borders hadn't shut just then and we were still allowed to travel um, within our region. Um, so there was that messaging of, you know, explore your own backyard, which is obviously not what we're able to do now. So that's why I guess our messaging has definitely evolved over the last month. Um, and it was just being really open and honest and providing that sense of calmness um, through the video that we selected. Over the, part, over the next few weeks, um, up until Easter, um, we just wanted to highlight some of the different pieces of content that we were sharing on our channels. And um, these, some of these ideas actually came through from a story that we went out on Instagram with. So we asked our community to begin with um, what they wanted to see from Queensland during this time. And they were still, the messaging um, and the quest, the responses were still really positive and they did still want to see Queensland content. Um, so we began sharing things like um, to encourage future dreaming and future travel plans. Um, on the post on the left, we introduced the save button on Instagram, which is the bookmarking tool on the bottom um, right of the post. Um, and that's a good way to encourage people to save a post down and add it to your future travel bucket list. Um, we have shared a number of virtual experiences, um, a virtual snorkel, um, uh, sharing different um, live streams of different animals. And then we've also gone with um, more calming imagery and video pieces um, of things like the rainforest and using the raw sounds of nature to really um, calm people. Um, we've also played to the lighthearted side of things and um, also experiences um, that are quite well known and um, kind of bring back those no nostalgic memories for people. Um, just with, for an example, the Corumban Sanctuary post down the bottom. Um, just before Easter, so the posts on the right, we were given the um, directive to really convey that stay at home message. Um, that was when we really needed to ensure we weren't leaving our homes. So our um, we really had to think about the content we wanted to share over the long weekend break um, and really incorporate that stay at home message. So um, we produced a, um, a totals video um, of the nesting and hatching season. Um, and that really speaks to our new brand nar narrative that um, Sarah will take you through shortly. But it's all about um, while we've taken a moment to pause, our nature keeps um, thriving. Um, and alongside that, we worked um, with our in-house team to create a colouring in, um, a number of colouring in posts or pictures. Um, and that's just, to, um, I guess, to provide the families at home and the kids with something to do and to encourage, um, um, you know, people at home to think about a time when you can experience a Queensland animal encounter again and just have those conversations and dream about your future travel plans. Um, we also tapped in to our Queensland creators um, who are our ambassadors, if you like, to um, go out on their channels and, you know, provide that same messaging around stay home and um, also have worked with them to do a bit of Q&A um, over our Instagram stories to keep um, our audience entertained and ask questions and engaged. Um, I'll now hand over to Sarah to talk through um, our Project Thrive. Thank you. Um, so this is Project Thrive. I'm assuming everyone can hear me just fine. 
yeah, just wanted to check that before I got too far into the um, presentation. So um, this is Project Thrive. So as many throughout the industry are aware, um, TQ have been working on an evolution of the Queensland brand, um, not the logo or the tagline, but the brand territory of travel for good. Um, so we've now developed content guidelines for this time that we're in now. And we began impl implementing them on social channels last week. Um, so it's called Project Thrive, and we're asking our partners, industry networks, to create and post content during the different stages of COVID-19 that talks to our key message of how, despite the situation we find ourselves in, Queensland continues to thrive. So the objective of this campaign is that nature and the human spirit continue to thrive despite what is happening. Um, and we've broken it down into the three phases in line with the coronavirus curve. Um, homebound, which we and many other countries are in now, um, the populations are social distancing, they're staying in their homes, travel is banned or it's not considered, and there are a range of emotions, including anxiety, anticipatory, I don't know if I pronounced that right, anticipatory grief and boredom. Um, the next is emerging where we'll see a relaxation of the general restrictions. There are a range of emotions here that include being cautious, hopeful, grateful and questioning. Um, and then we have the returning, which is when our borders are open again. Um, the emotions expected here are kind of like grateful, enthusiastic. Um, it is important to note that different countries will experience these, these phases at different times and to differing degrees. So it's going to impact on how they view their emotional statement through their emotional state throughout this. Um, so to the next slide. So in our homebound. Yes, wonderful. In our homebound um, phase, we are currently embodying the homebound messaging on our platforms um, because that's the phase that we're in. The marketing objective during this phase is to build trust, stay relevant and inspire. We want to make sure that during this time, Queensland is seen as a source of comfort and reassurance and that our nature and wildlife are continuing to flourish despite this period of isolation, while also staying relevant and keeping Queensland top of mind. Um, an example of our homebound posts can be seen on our social channels as of pretty much last week and here about turtle hatching. In this post, we point out why we might be at home. There are hundreds of baby turtles discovering the magic of the Great Barrier Reef for the first time right now. Um, its message is that wildlife continues to thrive and that's something that can still be enjoyed from inside our homes. Um, so we then move on to emerging um, where we will see general restrictions relax. So the key message during this time um, is that Queensland's nature and ancient wisdom will change you and the marketing objective is to stimulate and inspire travel plans now that travel has the chance to return more prominently into the conversation. Um, so during this phase, content should be specific and be about how experiences will make the traveller feel. Acknowledge that their world has changed and that Queensland can deliver on these change needs. Um, so an example of captions during this post are on screen now, as you can see. Um, so it feels like a dream, but it can soon be a reality. This is the magical keeper reef of, of Townsville, North Queensland. It is easy to get lost at this dive site as the coral gardens are divided by ridges and bommies, creating a coral maze. Time to float some travel plans? We'll wait. Um, so finally, after this, we have our phase three, which is returning. Um, so this will be when our borders finally begin to open again. So the key message here is that new Queensland inspired appreciation of life and the marketing objective is to stimulate and inspire bookings. So content in this time should be making travel easy, should show the best experiences, how to explore a destination, travel itineraries, the positive impacts of travel and highlight safety and a click through to book because we are now back open. Um, it is important to note, as you'd already be aware, that the borders are likely to open to different areas at different times. Um, for example, it's pretty likely now that intrastate, intrastate travellers will return before interstate and international travellers. Um, so examples of captions during this period, you can see are on screen again. Like, excuse our overzealous hosts, but we have been waiting so long for this moment to arrive. An emotional day welcoming visitors back to the Great Barrier Reef. At one with every creature, what a beautiful way to be. So in addition to these three phases and our phased approach out of the COVID-19 curve, we also have some general tips that we are following. Um, firstly, throughout this whole time, it is incredibly important to monitor the sentiment on your channels, to understand how the public is perceiving your posts 
and to understand if what you're trying to say has been accepted by your audience. Um, secondly, it's a really great time to form a connection with your audience through emotional tones. Everyone is pretty feeling pretty emotional in some way or another about what has happened and it's a good time to form the connection by highlighting how visiting you or using your product is helping the community and economy recover. Um, and thirdly, reassure with authority, like look at what the public is saying and what um, you might have noticed on your channels or even in the media. If people are still feeling cautious about, for example, cleanliness, show how you're overcoming this concern. If you're a hotel, explain the extra procedures you might not abide by. Just show how you're kind of overcoming this. Um, and then in general to this, um, we say so okay, in general to this use and curate user generated content encourage your audience to share their photos of your experience using your branded hashtag if you don't have a branded hashtag consider making one they're great um, not only does this increase the exposure of your content it changes the conversation from you telling your audience how great you are to your audience telling their friends about how great of a time they had with you um, and it's also a great time to develop any interactive content you can use. Like Eleni was saying earlier, we've been using Q&As with our Queensland creators um, and sharing operator live streams on our Queensland blogs. Um, and if it's applicable or possible for you, you could also look at potential social media competitions to increase exposure for your business in return for a free experience as the prize. Just anything to get messaging out there again that you are back open. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much all I have to say um, that is the end of our presentation. Is there anything that we can answer? So if you have any questions for the ladies, um, please uh, just pop them into the Q&A button down the bottom. Um, I, I will kick start with one if that's okay. Um, we're obviously in a situation that's quite unique at the moment with um, coronavirus. And as you mentioned, everyone's homebound and there's probably a state of boredom for a lot of people. Um, what have you actually seen your engagement like with the social media channels in comparison to pre-COVID, for example? Are people still seeking content? Um, is there a demand for it? Um, right at the very start, we saw a very massive increase in consumption, as I think people were facing the fact that they were spending a lot of time on screens. Um, we have seen that decline in recent weeks, but we also have seen, but that's kind of more returning back to like a normal period. Um, but we, so people are still on social media, they are still looking. Um, we have also seen through um, just looking at our analytics that people are online at different times. So we would typically post say, um, 9 p.m. at night as people go into bed they might be on their phone or first thing in the morning when they wake up whereas if a lot of people are working from home or aren't working at all they're going to be at social media at different times so we're going to start actually this week looking at posting midday just changing it up to see what kind of results better because we've noticed that people are online at different times. And those analytics can be found through Facebook through your Facebook yep. page um, so it gives you an idea of when um, your fans or followers are most likely to be online and engaging with content. Fantastic and we can send through some if anyone doesn't know how to find those insights on Facebook feel free to reach out to the team at Towns Enterprise and we can send through some tips on how to do that as well. Are, are you finding that particular types of content are getting more traction live videos comparison to pre-recorded or um, photos over text or all those types of things? Cute animals if you have cute animals don't be afraid to use them it's a great but, time to <laughs> we've got bungalow on the line here so i'm sure they've got plenty of um, bungalow bay koala park i'm sure they've got plenty of cute animals that they can um post <laughs> that content so we could share on our channels so. <laughs> and that's, that's a good point eleni so if people are um and, and we've got a number of operators here who i know are already creating a great range of um creative and innovative content solutions at the moment how do they how do they share that with um, TEQ uh, to make sure that we're getting cut through on a, on a national level as well yeah um, I, I know for some regions it's come through our destinations team and that, that is definitely feeded through to us um, some of it comes through media so that can be um, pitched out for PR and um, I know a lot of it is being um, represented in our blog content as well. There's a daily um, blog um, page that is being updated with everything that the industry are doing. Um, that have to also, be anything that you share on your own channels, if you could hashtag this is Queensland, because both Eleni and I literally live on that hashtag. So if you post it on there, we're going to see it. So 
Awesome. And that's where we always look for content. That's a great tip. And don't forget to also hashtag Council Shines because Simone and our team live on that hashtag <laughs> going through our channels as well. Yeah. We have had a, a question pop up from um, somebody. They've just asked, uh, do you have any insights in the, t and it's a great question, do you have any insights into the type of experiences people will be craving post COVID-19? We are thinking what our research is telling us is that as people are going to be leaving this, they're going to, if they're traveling, they're going to want to be traveling for, for a good reason. They want to be contributing to the world. They're going to want to be contributing to something more than just going on like a casual holiday. So we are under the impression that's kind of the way that we're going to be leading is following in that returning phase with just lots of, it's a beautiful way to be these are amazing creatures you can connect with and kind of making our holidays more than just a drop and flop to make people a lot more like engaged in their holidays. Great. Thank you. We've um, just had someone as well asking about the hashtags again. So I'll just remind everyone that probably three key hashtags, um, hashtag Townsville Shines, which is our regional one, hashtag this is Queensland with Jeleni and Sarah um, monitor for tourism and events Queensland, and also hashtag see Australia, which tourism Australia monitor as well. So hopefully um, you can write all those down and we might send them out later. We have just popped up a bit of a poll. We wanna know how innovative you have been with your social media during this time. So um, Feel free, it should just pop up on your screen. Let's see who's um, who's getting innovative with their, with their um, social media. And please feel free to pop any other questions in while we've got the ladies here as well. Yeah, it's been great actually kind of seeing how the world has changed with very little notice and very quickly. Just even really massive brands like um, McDonald's, like just the way that they have like created new content, changed their logos up to imply social, just, you know, just all of that stuff's really it's quite like inspiring. It's inspiring. Like it's motivating to see how quickly people can change. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's probably um, a good, a good um, question comes from that too. I suppose Sarah is, you know, when we're talking about reopening as an, as a tourism economy and as a, as a region as well, how will our, how will our experiences adapt to people's new found um, you know, abilities and technology, I suppose. We're having things like this webinar live and- Yeah, yeah. how we ever going to like be working from an office again? <laughs> like <laughs> if we're, all the people that have been working from home, it'll be a lot, it'll be a lot easier to have a few work from home days in the future. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So it's something for operators to think about is how they can potentially integrate some of those technological experiences into their experience post COVID as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, looks like our poll results uh, are in. Um, so we've probably got about 60% of our operators are trying something new and being more creative, but still learning. So hopefully we will be able to um, provide you with some great learning experiences through these webinars. And if you have any other ideas, questions you want to share, please, please send them through. Um, we've had as well, we've had a comment from Perk Tucker Gallery. They've done, uh, sorry, someone said that Perk Tucker, Gallery, Perk Tucker Gallery have done some great jobs with their virtual galleries and their two exhibitions, which is fantastic. Um, we've also had a question here. Um, is there any insights on how you think the grey nomad uh, migration may go this year? Would they be starting later? Are they still going to be traveling? And are you communicating to them through social media channels as well? So any thoughts on that specific market, maybe the empty nesters um, in the, of the older market? Um, I know that we are having a look into what travellers, how travellers are going to be changed from COVID-19. So we have our key markets and, for example, like one of them's families. Um, and so we're going, we are doing a lot of research now as to is this going to change? Is it going to be the same key markets as after? So that research is kind of like ongoing, essentially. And it is just going to be a lot of just watching what happens. Like it depends when the borders open back up again. It, depends what the government's going to allow because they might say for example allow us to walk around our towns and hang out with friends but they're like you're not traveling just yet so once we kind of probably get a better idea of the situations at hand because it's just changing so frequently um then but the research has already started like the research team at teq is has been looking into this right from the word go absolutely and i think um 
the, the travel sentiment is something else to consider as well. It may take a little bit longer for markets um, in that older generation who are probably uh, the highest risk at the moment. It may take them a little bit longer to have the confidence and uh, to, yeah. to go out there. So uh, from, a, from a Townsville Enterprise point of view and our strategic direction in regards to how we, we might be reopening uh, with our marketing strategy, we're certainly looking at which markets are probably going to be more resilient, more capable to travel in regards to um, financial position as well, because there are a lot of people who have been hit financially. And geographically, obviously, as Sarah said, the, the borders will open, the Queensland borders will open probably after more of our regional areas open. So we, we have to look at maybe a drive strategy and a localised marketing strategy before we go to um, the rest of the state and obviously the rest of the country as well. So um, we um, we are working very closely with TEQ around what our strategy for recovery looks like. And I am looking forward to sharing that all with you through one of these sessions as well. Um, so we will have some great engagement with everyone around how we do that. Um, We've also got a question here that um, from Laurie Murphy from JCU. She said she's been following the bin isolation outing Facebook group. Oh, have I. <laughs> um, which uh, has started from Aussies dressing up to take their bins out to the curb and posting it now has over 1 million followers worldwide. It's incredible. Lots of comments from abroad about how the Aussie sense of humour and also how they can't wait to visit and shows the importance of locals and, and people in the destination story. Did you want to um, emphasize anything from that, Sarah or Eleni? Um, other than that, it's probably my favorite group on Facebook right now. And my mom, she's the type of person that comments on everyone saying super work. Um, <laughs> but um, I think it is important. And it could be like a thing that we start looking into because it is the people that give an area or a destination kind of a bit more character. And I know that's what Tourism Australia definitely started looking into um, with their campaigns last year, like philosophy and such like that, where they were focusing on like the human element behind um, everything like that. But yeah, no, the Vin Isolation Group is probably the best thing that's come out of COVID-19. <laughs> Very, um, it's very Aussie, isn't it? Um, yes. <laughs> just picking up on that as well with regards to featuring, uh, we've got a number of fantastic operators and people in our region who are quite characters and, um, you know, that, that your identity is part of our destination's identity as well. Um, so Simone's working on a few content pieces that will engage with our operators. So if you're keen to be a part of that, please do reach out at any time as well. Um, so we might quickly throw to one last poll before we um, wrap up. So if you've got any questions in the meantime, um, please pop them in. And while we're answering, while we're um, all answering that poll, which is about how you have thought about the next phase of tourism recovery, have you started to think about your social media in the recovery phase, or, or are you not quite sure what to do there yet? Um, and either way, it's totally okay because we're all here to help you out. Um, we've had a question come through as well. Do you think that people are going to be comfortable to sit in a full cafe in the future? And I think there's a lot of questions about what people sentiment towards different experiences and businesses and, um, you know, even questions around the cruise industry, for example. It's a little bit crystal balling at the moment as to what people are going to do post-COVID. But I know the, the team at TEQ and Tourism Australia, who we're working very closely with, are doing a lot of work around sentiment. Um, and around what markets are going to be ready to to travel and to and what they're going and what the experiences are going to look like because uh, we will certainly be entering into a whole new world post COVID that we're all going to have to navigate. Um, ladies, did you have anything that you wanted to add to that question or that answer? Um, no, nothing additional from from our end. I think yeah, it's just really listening into what. Um, you know, each of the different markets that um, are feeling and wanting and needing. So, and tailoring content and tailoring, you know, different messaging to, to them and ensuring, yeah, the product has, um, I guess, or experience um, has pivoted slightly to, yeah, yeah. really to make that on board. Yeah, definitely. And we've got our thing to keep in mind is throughout the entire process, one thing we are all kind of saying and thinking is that you just got to keep your ear to the ground and it's just, scrolling through other people's Facebook, seeing what they're doing here, listening to the news, like talking to your colleagues. I think it's just, we're all in it together. And I think we're all just going to model our way through it. But I think, yeah, as long as you're trying to do your best to keep your finger on the pulse and kind of 
get a feel for it yourself as, as much as listening to the, the leaders in the um in the industry i think yeah we're all just gonna have to keep our ear to the ground and see how it all falls apart <laughs> yeah and collaborate and share share things as they're coming through as well and it looks like uh, most of our operators have started to think about what they're going to be doing with their socials in the future which is fantastic so keen to hear some of those ideas um, if you would like to share them later as well. Um, so I think that in, unless there's, um, is there any- yes, One more question, Lise, that's just come yeah. through. Anita um, has just asked if there's anything happening for VIX in, as in visitor information centres. Anita, do you mean in regards to reopening visitor information centres or specifically around content for visitor information centres? I might, um, I might just, I can actually allow you to talk. So developing approaches. Yes, definitely. So visitor, our visitor information centers in our region are certainly um, a part of our overarching strategy for recovery for tourism. So we will uh, we're happy to talk through that with you um, in more detail one-on-one, uh, -on -one, but also we will um, present that to our members and stakeholders through one of these sessions in the next sort of week or two as well. So um, thank you for that question. I think um, that summarizes, sums up our, our session today. We wanted to keep these really quick, short, sharp, sort of 40 minute sessions um, and really appreciate the support from um, Sarah Lenny and the rest of the TEQ team as well for, for sharing your insights today. Um, a quick little summary from me on some things to think about from the ladies' presentations and our conversations as well. Um, this is the time here and now to look at building trust, inspiring travel for the future and Think creatively about how you can resonate your personality and your the DNA of your experience through your social media channels at this time, um, because that will put you in a good place for recovery as well. Don't forget to share your posts using three key hashtags, hashtag Townsville Shines, hashtag This Is Queensland and hashtag See Australia, so that we as the RTO and the state organisation and, and Australian national organisation can share that and broaden your reach. If you're keen to be a part of any of the campaign activities that Simone spoke about earlier today, the virtual staycation, um, which is online sharing of content, and also our buy now, holiday later, please um, touch base with Simone. We've got some great, uh, great deadlines coming up with Mother's Day and whatnot that we'll be able to push that out. Um, and don't be afraid during this time when people are... Um, genuinely interested in looking at people putting bins out to the curb to be creative with your content. So, you know, think about maybe doing some live streams, uh, videos, photos, things that you might not have done before. Um, and if you want to spend some time with our team brainstorming some ideas specific to your business, please do reach out um, to myself, Simone, or anyone else from our team at the tell at tell.com.au email. So thank you again so much, everyone, for joining in. Hopefully you got a few tips and tricks from that and hopefully it's um, inspired you to start thinking creatively with your social media channels during this opportune time. Um, we will next week, as I said, as I mentioned, we will be launching a couple of blogs and pre-recorded videos for you to tap into, uh, but very keen to hear from everyone about topics they'd like to hear from us through these sessions as well. Um, so until next time, thank you very much and thank you, Simone, Sarah and Eleni for your time today as well. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you, everyone.